So hi everyone. So again, welcome to the next lecture. In the previous lecture of the securities analysis chapter, we completed how the dividends are going to impact the stock prices, the garden model, everything from the steady material contents only. Okay. No bhakwas in that. Everything, whatever is there in the study material, that only we try to cover in a more understandable format. Okay. First thing is, I already told you we are going to start first with the securities analysis chapter as institute has done. In subject, every chapter is equally important. Equally what's uh, important? There is no such concept that one chapter is more important than another. You cannot because there is a history for ICI where from securities analysis and share valuation chapter 2025 marks came where derivatives were not even a single question was tested and vice versa is also there. Therefore, we can't generally quantify in SFM, this chapter is important, this topic is important, this is easy, this is difficult, there is no such concept. In any concept, he can give an easy way. In easy concepts also, he can torture us in exam. Therefore, for me, there is no easy concept, there is no difficult concept, there is no complex issue, there is no very easy issue. Everything is a financial management based subject, that's all. For me, it is a subject. In the same way, we need to deal each and every concept. And uh, uh, coming up with uh, one live session with regard to the international financial management very soon in one or two days, okay? Time has to be managed because I am in Chennai as of now, recording in KS Academy. So uh, depending on the other faculties, uh, uh, the timings and schedules, I need to plan myself for my live and I need to come live. So the thing that I want to tell you is, once I am coming up live with regard to the IFM concept, I will clearly explain you all the concepts of IFM from the bare basic level. Each and every doubt of you will be clarified in the live session, okay, with regard to why ask rate will come, why bid rates will come, what is the ask rate, what is the bid rate. Many people will have a confusion, sir, when doing a problem, I apply ask, but in the answer there will be bid, or I will apply bid, there will be ask. Or basics, I can understand, sir, when I deeply go into some practical illustrations, the confusion is coming as to what rates I have to use. Every question of yours will be answered. Live, la, you can shoot up with your any kind of doubt with regard to the international financial management on the date. Okay. One or two days live will come up live. Then you can also see the competency within. So really whether Kaushim Keji is capable of uh, all these things or not. Yes. If you want, you can test directly live. Openly. Yes. So any kind of doubt you have with regard to the international financial management in two, three sessions live will cover all your doubts. Okay. Anyway, in the crash session or fast track session, like every point I will explain, number of problems will be less. Regular than that, everything will be there. Every analysis we will do, markets analysis we will do with regard to the forex. And problems also, 123 problems are compiled. Everything we do pen on paper. Such that everything will be completed. Confidence will come during the classes itself. Crash batch already you might have learned the so therefore, concept as if you don't know anything, I will take up. Okay, concept as if you don't know anything, I will take up. You know, but as if you don't know anything, I will tell from the bare basics. Okay, that's my nizam from the very beginning. Whether you know or not, it's my prime duty to explain you the basics of the concept. Sir, a student know the basics, sir. Skip the video, F go front, and then listen. No, sir, the basics also, I don't know certain important issues, what you are teaching. Some basics what you are teaching are not even taught. Are not, I didn't understand before. Then you listen. What's wrong in knowing that? If I teach less, you have to uh, feel bad. I am telling I will teach from the very bare basic level even in the case of first like lectures. So therefore, no concept of uh, skipping anything inside. And no important, no Im unimportant. Forex is more important. Uh, securities analysis is less important. Take the latest paper. Take the latest paper, securities analysis, the two questions came for 1618 to 14 marks. Is it, is it, a, is it a lesser number? 14 is a less number. So there is no such concept of easy and difficult, big chapter, small chapter, every chapter is equally important for exams. Okay, I respect every chapter, no disrespect to any chapter in the syllabus. Okay, every concept, whether small or big, we have to understand in a right way. Okay. So that's the correct way of understanding the concepts. Okay. Now, in the previous lecture, I told you about 
how the dividends are going to impact the share prices how the dividends are going to impact what's the share prices in this particular lecture i am going to explain a relative valuation concept what concepts are relative valuation concept called as a pe multiple okay pe multiple okay now let us see the concept valuation of a share can be of two types one is a self valuation second one is a relative valuation first one is what's a self valuation second one relative valuation what is self valuation company's information will be used to value its share okay company's full financials we will use to value the share how free cash flows concept is there where we will take the cash flows of that company expected in future we will bring it to the present and value the share that's one way okay second way you can use your uh, uh, nav model you can use your capitalization models you can use the profit earning capacity models you can use so many model dividend model d1 by k minus gp not so many models are there where i will use the company's information to value the share share price now we will be going on into a different area where our company information will be compared to the benchmark and valuation will be done how relative valuation concept what concept sir relative valuation concept let me explain what is this relative valuation valuation of a share will be of two types self valuation relative valuation relative valuation name itself is clear in relation to something we will value that's called as a relative valuation pe model comes into the second side okay let's see now let us take one sector i will take banking benchmark company for the banking in india is hdfc say for example i am not taking real numbers here i don't want to confuse the student concept na standardized numbers let us take when we go into market analysis real numbers we will take eps of hdfc for example say 50 rupees market price that is getting traded is 1000 rupee means my eps or mps comparison la my mps is how many times of the eps it is 1000 1000 rupees this is 50 rupees that means it's a 20 times the eps the market price of the company is okay next this is the pe ratio of the industry that means industry will take banking industry will take banking sector will take 20 times of pe ratio as a benchmark for its valuation now i want the price of sbi stocks on the basis of hdfc pe ratio not hdfc pe ratio technically this is hdfc pe ratio is 20 but once hdfc is a industry benchmark i will call it as a industry pe ratio what pe ratio sir industry pe ratio sector pe ratio okay decide the company is sbi i want for sbi eps 100 for whom for sbi what is the industry based pe 20 ideally theoretically how much should be the market price of sbi if it reaches the benchmark pe ratio 2000 the price should be because 100 is the eps 20 is the industry pe ratio so in comparison with the market ideally my price should be 2000 so let us understand the concept ideally price of sbi should be 2000 rupees in the given case actually the price is 2300 technically what does it mean it outperformed the industry means what as per industry your mps should be 20 times the eps but in this case it is a 23 times below have written that means you are better performing than the market next case share price of sbi is only 1800 means what you understand it is underperforming the industry okay underperformed the industry it's only 18 times this is the basic analysis that means the price of sbi will be analyzed on the basis of industry pe ratio and we will compare with the actual market prices ideally it should be 2000 as a theoretical market price we compare it with the actual 2300 in 1800 it can be overpriced sometimes it can be underpriced also sometimes okay this is the thing underperform overperform 
next another way of understanding the pe multiple another way of understanding what's a pe multiple see here pe equal to p means mps e means eps mps by eps will be equal to pe ratio number of times we will analyze okay now let us see the right side part without growth without growth dividend approach p not equal to d by ke perpetual growth i told you na cf per annum divided by rr will give you present value of perpetuity like that i want present value of the share which gives a same dividend forever without a growth okay p not equal to d by ke p not equal to d by ke now i am taking the ke to the other side okay k e to the other side if you take it become d by p not or d by p you can write okay so k e equal to d by p instead of using dividend approach without growth i will use earnings approach without growth without growth the earnings approach p not equal to e by k e okay k e equal to what e by p e by p k e equal to e by p we want the p e means by p by e means what it can be 1 by k e so 1 by k e equal to p by e so whenever in the examination question p e is not given but we require p e to value something the only remedy available is 1 by k e will be p e ratio clear next this is all about the p e ratios this is all about what's a p e ratio so we now completed this aspect next issue understanding the concept of sustainable growth understand the concept of what's a sustainable growth sir what is sustainable sustainable growth means growth g okay so see here now p equal to d1 by ke minus g p equal to what's a d1 by ke minus g g equal to b into r g equal to what sir b into r g equal to b into r what is b b represents retention proportion g b represents what sir retention proportion sir means what okay i will explain my eps is 10 rupees in this i will pay dividend per share of 5 rupees how much i have retained my eps 5 rupees technically now my payout ratio is 50% also called as 0.5 proportion and my retention is 0.5 proportion this retention of 0.5 we call as a retention proportion that's the b how much component is retained 50% component is retained after retaining in the company 100 rupees profit i got 50 i paid as a dividend balance 50 what you are doing balance 50 i retained them after retention what you are doing you are putting it idle huh? no i am investing at a rate of return that investment technically the reinvestment propels the growth in a company propels what sir growth in a company so g equal to b into r b represents a retention proportion into rate of return retention proportion means the balance proportion left after payout proportion into rate of return into what sir rate of return that means how much return you are getting that rate whatever you are investing them that reinvestment rate we call as a rate of return retention proportion into rate of return that concept is called as a growth now listen carefully to the point whenever companies retain their profits they will put somewhere else that putting into some amount in somewhere else in a good investment will give them a rate of return that is called as a growth in a company so notes growth is a product of retention proportion and return on equity return reinvestment propels growth when a company follow a pattern of retention and investment every year the growth that constantly come to the company is called as a sustainable growth what it is called as sustainable growth so you may think now sir you are telling this concept of sustainable growth okay is it really useful for us to understand sir at the beginning of this session itself i said one point clearly whatever you are listening at the basics now will form your future will form your understanding in the future 
I will give you an example. Okay, I will give you an example. Okay, see here. This is the next chapter we are going to start. I'm not good. I'm not telling that we are starting new chapter. I'm showing it. Security violation chapter. A pakka eight to twelve marks chapter. Okay, sir. So I'm going uh, into one of the question given in our study material. Mm, see here now. This is a query. A question that came for six marks in exam. May 2008 exam. This question was asked. Financial data was given. Assets turnover ratio, effective tax, operating margin, something, all the information given. Draw the income statement for the year. Second one, calculate the sustainable growth rate. Third one, fair price of the company share using dividend discount model. First thing, sir, I am not a damn bloody fool to unnecessarily explain things in class. First thing, my target is once a person is done with his uh, foundation of a concept clearly, he can do anything on his own. Use of my person is also not required. Provided you understand the concept's meaning very clearly with regard to each and every word used inside. Here the word used is sustainable growth rate. I will be discussing about sustainable growth rate at the beginning of this chapter. Not in this chapter, in the beginning of security analysis I am discussing now. When we really come into the concept, no one will get the doubt. So therefore, first wipe the intention that one chapter is important, one chapter is unimportant, or uh, first we need to understand uh, directly forex, etc. There is no such hard and fast rule in understanding financial management. It is all about going in a correct way of understanding. Sustainable growth rate means a growth rate which is continuing forever. Okay, so how can we understand that uh, continuing the growth forever? This is the word. So when a company follow a pattern of retention, if the retention proportion into rate of return, okay, continues for uh, so many number of years still perpetuity, the growth that the company experiences will be called as sustainable growth. Called as sustainable growth. So what I am teaching today will be useful for you when we are in uh, some 30 problem or 35 problem in the security violation chapter. At the time, again I need not tell what do you mean by sustainable growth rate, what do you mean by growth in company, I need not tell. I will e intimate that on the first lectures I have uh, said uh, that concept is here. So we are learning the basics also very very clearly. Okay, so next one. Now the question starts. Sir, in so many cases, we use the word growth. We use the word what sir? Growth. Growth means G equal to 5, G equal to 10, G equal to 12. If I tell that, what do you mean by G? Growth means what? Growth in dividends are, growth in earnings are, growth in both are. Answer this. Growth in dividends or growth in earnings or growth in both. Growth means what? Growth in earnings are, growth in dividends are, or both will grow at the same rate. Are. What is the correct interpretation? The question will arise or not. Without understanding that, how can you do the problems here? G means 5%. Blindly if you do, if one important point was inserted into the question, gone. So we need to have a clarity. Growth represents what? Growth in what? Growth in dividends, uh, growth in earnings, uh, both are growing. Uh. So how can we understand that? So for understanding this particular point, we need to have some clarity. See here. I have taken two scenarios. Example. There is a company called as X Limited. There is a company called as X Limited. Okay. See here, this is the information that is provided. Scenario number one. Year one, EPS of this X Limited is rupees 10. Year two, EPS of X Limited is rupees 12. Means how much growth is there? 10 has become 12. That means 12 minus 10, okay, 12 minus 10. So if you see these numbers clearly, company X limited in the year 1, it has declared, it has an EPS of rupees 10. Year 2, the EPS has came up to 12. 
So what is the growth in EPS? The growth in EPS is 20 percent. Okay, 20 percent. DPS. DPS is 4. In that, next year has increased to 4.8. Now listen carefully. EPS 10, DPS is 4. 40 percent is the payout. EPS is 12. DPS is 4.8, so 12 into again how much percent? 40 percent payout ratio is there. DPS came to 4.8. Now see the growth in EPS. 10 became 12 means 20 percent growth. Okay. If we had 12 as a base, 33.33, almost 20 percent. For understanding sake, I have written 20 percent here. So <coughs> minus 10 divided by the base 10 into 100 will give you 20. Effectively, if you want to find, you can divide it also it becomes 33.33 but 20 may be more fairly correct. Next DPS. DPS is originally 4. Base has become 4.8. How much growth is there? 20 percent growth is there. Why? It's because the company follow same payout ratio both the years. Okay. Same payout ratio both the years. So growth in EPS is the growth in DPS as well because company follow constant payout in two years. You take third year again, same answer 20% will come if you have a same payout. Okay. Now listen carefully to the logic. Year number scenario two, year one, EPS is 10, DP, uh, next year EPS is 12. How much is the growth? 20%. Now in that 10, 40% is divided, dividend 4. In that 12, 50% is declared, it is 6. Now, the growth in EPS is not the growth in DP, GP, DPS. It become 20, that become 50. 4 become 8 means 100 percent growth. 4 become 6 means 50 percent growth. So, 4 has become 6. Uh, therefore, the growth here is 50. Therefore, G in the EPS is 20, G in the DPS is 50 because company follow different payout ratio. Now, a question will arise. Now, a question will arise. What question will arise? question is, sir, company follow a different payout ratio, well and good. If different payout ratio is followed, G in EPS and G in DPS is not same. Logic understood. However, when a question is given in exam, G, what it will be? It is a growth in EPS or it is a growth in DPS. That we need to understand. So, whether it is a growth in DPS or EPS, it is always a growth in EPS only. EPS growth will be reflected on the DPS provided you follow the same payout ratio. That means if you have a constant payout, growth in EPS will become growth in DPS. But if you follow a different payout, growth in EPS is not growth in DPS. That means EPS growth only we have to consider. DPS growth whether it should be equal to EPS growth or not, depends on the payout ratio. On some variable amount it is dependent on. Therefore, we should not consider that growth means always a growth in EPS. On this, I can show you one proof as well. See here, sustainable growth rate in the dividends is the second question that he is asking. Okay, That's why in the question he has given the dividend payout ratio. dividend payout. Okay, dividend payout ratio is given. Technically here we assume that payout ratio is constantly followed. That's why he is asking sustainable growth. Means what we should presume that this dividend payout is also presumed to sustain every year. Growth in EPSA is growth in DPS. We need to presume here. Okay, that's why in the question he used calculate the sustainable growth rate hidden stop of earnings. Institute is having a full clarity that G means G in EPS first. Okay. Later, if you follow the same payout, it may become growth also in the dividends. Borrels, G always represents growth in earnings. Okay. He always represents growth in earnings. Okay. So, this is the point, sir. So, therefore, try to understand KE minus G, la, you have to take B into R. B represents what? Retention proportion means whatever is paid, whatever is retained, whatever is retained. Whatever is retained is earning a dividend, it's a earning, not a dividend. Already paid is a dividend. Whatever is not paid is still stands as a earning to the company. Therefore, growth is always earnings related growth. 
nothing is said in the question you can presume that it is a growth also in the dividend but if the company have different payout in the question we should consider growth in eps and growth in dps as different things okay <coughs> this is one important point i want to convey in this lecture now so how small the concept may be but it impacts big big problems after that so therefore again and again i have been telling don't show any disrespect towards the chapters every chapter is equally important every concept is equally important don't spread the notion that notion spreading itself is negative every concept is important okay so there is no concept like uh, these chapters are important these are unimportant forex is important derivatives is important these are unimportant if unimportant how can we understand all these things so many great concepts they try to explain using simple simple numericals okay so therefore uh, now some summary and the conclusion is growth always represents what growth in earnings are growth in dividends are growth in both are. it's growth in earnings it becomes both if there is a same payout ratio if the company follow different payout ratio growth in capital that means growth in eps is not growth in dps this is a summary okay now i have taken one illustration i have taken one what's a illustration book value per share 137.8 ke equal to 18% return on equity that means if i try, try to invest i invested 15% and retention proportion 60 means 0.6 calculate the p not this is a query question number 1 in which chapter security valuation chapter la first question again and again i have been telling i am not a fool each and every point i am explaining is there in your material you have to understand that in a right way okay so a company has a book value per share of rupees 137.8 return on equity 15 retention is 60% of the earnings okay the pin payout is 40 opportunity cost of capital means ke 18 compute the price of the share today using dividend growth model and walters model sir walters model keep it aside dividend growth model means what d1 by ke minus g model see here once bvps is what 137.8 ke 18 return on equity 15 retention proportion is 60 p not equal to we have to calculate okay p not equal to we need to calculate see here p not equal to d1 by ke minus g what is d1 dividend at the end of first year dividend generates out of what eps so eps into payout ratio will become dividend eps into next year dividend is d1 so next year earnings is eps1 okay eps1 or e1 you can take or eps you can take anything it is expected eps expected eps entirely will be paid as dividend uh, no it will be payout ratio multiplied so eps of the next year into that year payout ratio will give you the answer payout ratio not given in the question how to calculate 1 minus retention proportion will become the payout proportion so therefore d1 can also be written as eps into 1 minus b eps into 1 minus retention proportion means what it will be payout proportion eps into payout will give, give you dividend divided by ke minus g divided by what sir ke minus g g can be written as b into r so this is another formula p not equal to eps into 1 minus b divided by ke minus br see here to calculate using this model eps should be there in the information eps is not given what is eps eps can also be written as bvps into return on equity bvps into what's a return on equity so what is bvps 137.8 what is the return on equity 15% what is the earnings per share 20.67 is the earnings per share we got the earnings now question will arise sir you said you will derive all the formula you are writing directly i said i promise that each and every formula inside the subject will be discussed in elaborate irrespective of crash or regular batch i will explain about the formula very clearly no doubt in that if at all any formula is there which i am not explaining inside that 
okay you can directly put below this uh, this also along with the fast track lecture i will also upload this video on the youtube now you put directly a comment sir this particular formula you have directly written without explaining i will explain means i will explain every point inside that okay so sir anyway eps equal to bvps into roe bvps is 137.8 return on equity is 15 percent so what is the eps of the company 20.67 okay 20.67 into 1 minus retention proportion divided by ke minus b into r so value came to 91.87 91.87 91 okay now answer completed whatever the question he asked in the exam or question he asked here so practical question number one so a chapter having 31 questions in study material is a easy chapter or is it just like that left out chapter 31 institute study material questions are there means how many exam questions would have been there institute study material will cover 20 percent of the total problems so very important chapters are these are very very important and moreover when you see the cfa curriculum most of the areas will be on the portfolio derivatives everything will be there along with these security analysis and value very important on the stock markets okay sir anyway so if you see this eps dividend everything we have given p not equal to d1 by ke minus g has taken 91.89 91.89 i have got 91.87 no problem sir decimals sir anyway in this model i have done institute has done in the model of d1 by ke minus g you can write it anyway sir anyway how come you can tell eps equal to bvps into roe that's the next query okay how can you tell that eps equal to bvps into roe okay entire derivation i have given observation is required book value per share equal to bvps equal to book value per share equity divided by number of shares sorry sir first come to the right side book value per share first let us understand what is book value inside the books whatever is the value attributable to the equity shareholders we call it as a book value book value per share that means for the shareholders what is the value that you are going to give not price value when i call value it includes both equity and resource and surplus so book value means what equity share capital plus resource and surplus equity share capital will have a market value book value may have a market value we want only the book value so total equity share capital paid up car value cost plus the resource and surplus both put together we call it as what sir equity both we call it as what equity book value per share means what equity by number of shares book value is nothing but equity calculation okay sir next return on equity equal to what return by equity sir return on investment means what return by investment like the return on equity means return by equity okay now listen return on equity equal to return by equity equity means equity share capital resource and surplus equity share capital and resource and surplus will belong to debenture holders uh, will belong to preference shareholders uh, will belong to the equity uh, will belong to equity shareholders uh, equity shareholders therefore equity shareholders return by equity return by equity that means equity shareholders will ask a return in which form they will ask ebit return they will ask ebt return they will ask the eat return they will ask eat return so return asked by equity can be written as a pat divided by equity roe equal to pat by equity now numerator and denominator i will divide by number of shares pat by number of shares whole divided by equity by number of shares pat by number of shares we can write as eps equity by number of shares already i have given here you can write it as a bvps so therefore roe equal to eps by bvps so eps equal to roe into bvps or bvps into roe this is how that formula has been derived and we have already done in the notes in that regard if you see the insured study material they have directly given this 137.8 into 0.5 equal to 0.20.67 reasoning everything not given this is the reasoning for the given question and more
this problem we will do once again in security violation chapter this i have given only for you to understand the growth concept etc in the basic analysis of sustainable growth concept okay for that reason i explain this example with illustration format but when we come to the chapter again we will redo this particular problem okay write the notes from the beginning everyone please copy the notes everything the colored notes i will be releasing once everything is completed notes every point i am writing like this okay from the institute study material point of view from every point of view i am writing a colored notes like this lastly once completed uh, this direct color notes will come out into the market sir before that please note down
so hope you completed writing the notes so let us now continue <coughs> so my point is we now completed basics regarding this particular SFM as well as a chapter introduction less some concepts also we completed simultaneously what is completed now security analysis chapter la learning objective this is also completed sustainable growth okay fundamental analysis of the stocks basic understanding a theoretical lecture will be uploaded into the fast track uh, google drive and uh, technical analysis I, I have written the learning objectives but all the technical analysis concepts like dow theory charting techniques gdp impact candlesticks efficient market hypothesis all these things i will match with the portfolio management chapter which is one of the most typical concept in our syllabus every formula 36 formulae are there 36 formulae i will give the background background to analysis uh, interpretation of the formula problems everything we will do if any problem any formula of portfolio is not explained put a comment directly in the youtube that this particular formula don't have a derivative every formula i'm talking each and every for some formulas will have derivation some formulas will have interpretation no day will come where put number like this put numbers into this formula answer will come we will never tell like that so we will understand the idea behind the concept very very clearly okay now so technical analysis topic we will be uh, taking and carry forward to the portfolio chapter there i will be discussing about that in detail okay so i'm closing the lecture here with this we completed securities analysis concept anyway securities analysis concept even in our study material is a theoretical chapter with the four problems inside four problems are coming from the technical analysis efficient market hypothesis that i measured in the portfolio chapter for a correct understanding okay because risk analysis will come there that risk analysis anyway will do in portfolio theories so i merged there one theoretical lecture will come on fundamental analysis of the stocks hardly 45 minutes 30 minutes 45 minutes concept once that is completed we go into the next area called as security valuation what is the concept sir security valuation so thank you